Okay, so this I've logged onto the computer here, and I've opened this program at the bottom here, Cell Sense Standard. Cell Sense. We're going to sense what's going on in our cells. It's going to make sense, perfect sense. We're going to learn a lot of science. This is a program made by Olympus. Okay, Olympus makes our DP71 camera that I lectured on uh, in lab. Uh, this is a uh, camera that turns the photons that are coming in as uh, into digital that we can then see here on the screen. So we're going to see all the different colors that we want to examine on our tissue sections using a pillar of light which we call epifluorescence. Let me show you how this computer program is now controlling the whole microscope. Because I plugged into the universal control box into the back of that computer, and now I've opened the program. The program has remote control. This light was not on earlier. Go back and check the video. This light is now on because the computer and the universal control box, which controls the microscope, are talking to each other. So let me show you what some of the things are that the uh, computer can control. So, for example, let's say I wanted to change the objective lenses. So right now I'm at 4x. Let's go up to 10x. Watch what it does. Notice I am touching nothing. The computer does all of that through the universal control box. Let's say I wanted to change what color of light I am letting through from our light source. Fitzy would let green light through. Okay, Tritzy, red light or orange light. Texas red, very deep red. Dappy lets us see the blue. And bright field is where we're going to start. Bright field is actual white light, just like the light in the room, just like the light on any normal microscope. And we're going to use bright field to make sure our tissue is in focus on the, on the stage. Before we start looking for faint fluorescent signals, we want to see if the, we can even see tissue. So down here, we can turn on and off the lamp. Okay. So switching on and off the lamp, I've just turned it on. And notice that when I put my hand under there now, oh yeah, that light has been turned on. So we have proper control via the, micro, via the computer, via the universal control box, and all the parts of the microscope are currently working. So I'm going to go back to 4X, and let's just see, since there's light coming up there, what can we see? So um, I'm going to open the iris diaphragm. so that we get a lot of light going in there. And right now, why don't you come around here and show this knob right here. This knob I can gently pull out and all the way out. It has three settings, in, medium, and out. When it is all the way out, all the light comes up to the DP71 camera. So now if I look in the uh, oculars, I won't see anything because all the light is going up to the camera. So let's see what the camera is seeing. In order to do that, um, what I can do is go to the camera tab in my microscope control. So I've been controlling the microscope to move uh, what light setting is, uh, are on, what color of light, and what objective lens. Let's go to the camera. And now what we can do is say, show us live what the camera is currently seeing. Wow, that's not very exciting. What's going on here? Right now it's on manual and it's exposing for one quarter of a full second, 279 milliseconds. For white light, that's an incredibly long exposure. So of course this is overexposed. Let's just real quick, it's not fluorescent light, it's normal light. Let's just real quick hit the automatic button. 266. Now it's at 300 microseconds and we can see our tissue. So it automatically adjusted to let the camera absorb light for the right amount of time. Now clearly I didn't open our uh, light uh, source enough to get uh, the whole section. And I can see all this red stuff. It's relatively in focus. I don't need to move the stage up or down very much. But I'm not on the tissue that I'm interested in. So I'm just going to move the stage back and forth by using the stage controls. But as I move the stage back and forth, look at what happens on the screen. 
everything that I would have been watching with my eyes is instead on the screen. So, this is what should start to look familiar to you developmental biology students. This is a cat ovary. And these are large graphene follicles. Okay? Here is a primary follicle with an, uh, a very early oocyte. All these tiny cells up here are oocytes that have not yet begun to develop. And look at these two, side by side. Maybe this cat's soon to lay, uh, soon to have twins if both of those ovulate at the same time. Uh, they can be born at the same time as fraternal twins. So here are two, I'll call them eggs, but you know they're actually secondary oocytes. And they'll be ovulated, go down the fallopian tubes, and maybe meet some sperm. But I really can't see them that well. So you know what? Since I'm using a computer, what am I going to do? I'll use my scroll wheel. And I'll just zoom in. Um, well, you might want to stop zooming in, right? It starts to get super pixelated. The fact that we can zoom in using the digital camera, just like you do on your phone all the time when you're taking pictures, this gives us incredible power to focus in on what we want to learn about. So let's say these two cells are all I care about in this tissue section. I don't care about any of the uh, larger follicles over here. Or I don't care about any of the primary follicles. I just care about studying what's, what's going on in these two cells. Well, if I want to compare these two cells, I could zoom in, but now I don't see much. So let's go up in a magnification. And maybe then I'll be able to see better. So I'll just, right up here at the top of the screen, I've got control, and I'll go up to the 10x. Let's see how parfocal this microscope is. Well, that's not perfectly in focus, is it? So I'm gonna just go ahead and use the focus knob here, and go ahead and slowly focus my tissue. Aha! Can you not see that zona pellucida that you could not see in the lower magnification? What's a zona pellucida? That orange layer, like a jelly coat around the egg protecting it. So here we see two eggs. What's that browner dot in each one of them? Aha, nuclear material, DNA, a haploid nucleus. Why is there another dot? Because this cell is, might have a polar body on it, right? It's doing meiosis. So of course we would expect to see uh, some different regions of these cells. Well, what if I wanted to compare these cells, okay, but I wanted to go to even higher magnification. Let's say there's some detail I haven't been able to see yet. Well now, as I move the stage back and forth, I can get this cell on the right in my picture. Oops, I moved the wrong way. Or I can move this way but I can't get them both in the picture at the same time. So what do you do? Well, remember that I can zoom in all I want, and now I've got pixelated nuclei and pixelated zona pellucida, but that doesn't help me see both of them at the same time. So this program, CellSense, using um, our DP71 digital camera, has the ability to do something called stitching. So here at 20X, I have much clearer view of what's going on in the cell, but I can't compare them all in the same image. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come down here and do a program. And so we are going to, this, uh, this program, it's called a process manager. We are going to take multiple pictures and we will do something called stitching and put those images all into one larger file that we can open all at once. So, first thing I will do um, is I will click Start. Let's make sure I'm in perfect focus. You see I can go out of focus, and I like that, okay? So here I've got a good view of the follicle, and I will go ahead and hit Start. This is now the image. Look at what has happened in our gallery across the bottom. I have the live image, and I have image 93. Image 93 is the picture that I just took that it has saved, that the computer has saved. Now what I can do is I can hit these directional buttons, 
and say, I would like to take another picture and add it to that. So I'm missing part of my follicle here. Let's go down and get the rest of the follicle. Now, this is what the picture is that I've already taken, and this is the live view. They are the same right now, but they're not in the same place. So I told it I wanted to go down. So now what I need to do is I need to move my microscope stage up so that I can line these two up. So watch how I move the slot, move the stage, and there's the oocyte moving up, moving up, moving up, moving up. And I'm going to try to align those exactly. And when I do so, I can say, you know what? I've got a great picture of this follicle, but I don't have any pictures of this follicle yet. Let's go to the right. Now it has stitched these two images together into one saved file, all as image 93. So now I'm seeing this bottom image that I just took because that's what's in the live view. And so what do I need to do now? I need to move this side to side until it lines up perfectly, except this time I'm not going to line it up perfectly. Right? That black dot that's just going off the screen, I would have to move it until it's just lined up there perfectly. I'm not, I haven't lined up these two purple spots very well. Well, I like to make the joke close enough for government work. Okay? And this is a really smart computer. So when I tell it I now want to go up, it's going to look for pixels of certain color and line them up with pixels in the already saved image. So I want to go up, and it took that image and moved it until now there is a perfect alignment of all those spots that I was trying to line up. So now I have this entire follicle and I have the bottom half of this follicle. Where, where do I need to go now? I'm going to say I want to go up from where I currently am. Um... And so now I have to move that down. I'm going to try to line these three up with that three. Line these two lines up with these two lines. Line that space up with that space. It's coming down. I see these two guys. I see some orange. Yeah, whatever. It's close enough because the computer is smarter than me in knowing exactly when things are in perfect alignment or not. I now have both images in the same figure, in the same saved file, at the higher magnification. Whereas when I'm at this magnification and try to see both of them at once, I could only see this middle region. This is called stitching. So now I'll stop my process, and there's a beautiful image of all four. Now why did it go back to that? That's because it's the live view. Let's click on the image. There it is. But. Isn't it better if I zoom in more? You bet it is, so let's zoom in as much as we want with the computer. And now I can get as close as I want to these guys. I can say, oh, let's compare this guy to this guy, all in the same image. I can just back and forth. So here's the whole image that I just saved. 20x right here, 20x right here, 20x right here, 20x right here. But now I see a broader field of view. This is called stitching. So what we've accomplished thus far is we have made sure that our microscope stage is at the right level, that our tissue is in focus, right? So the stage isn't too high or too low. And we've made sure that um, the lights are working on the microscope and that uh, we know how to uh, take optimal pictures of our section so that we can make optimal discoveries about the differences between cells. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna switch over to a fluorescent slide. So I'll take this slide off and put a fluorescent slide on. Now, before I do that, you never touch any part here when you have a short working distance between the objective lens and the microscope. So what's the first thing I have to do? We go back down to 4X. So here the microscope is automatically turning and now there's a much bigger working distance. I can get my finger in there and I won't scratch any of the lenses. I take out my slide and leave it here for the next person to use to focus. And now we'll grab out microscope slides that have some fluorescence on them and we'll show, I'll show you how to use the epifluorescence to see that.